And look, the Kai'Sa is actually very low. And what I'm thinking here is, look. Boom, easy kill. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. Yesterday, I made a community post asking you guys what your favorite ADC is. And I also mentioned that if that post would get 500 likes, that I would make a video of every single ADC that I mentioned, which is Misfortune, Jinx, Jin, and Kaisa, I think. And that post got 500 likes in the first four hours. So, I'm gonna be grinding all these champions and giving you guys the ADC videos, you know? Um, you know, in the beginning of the video, I'm gonna be explaining the build part. If you don't care about the build, skip to the gameplay immediately timestamps in the description. Also, giving away 10 skins this month. All you gotta do, put down a comment under this video, right? Okay, so about the build, this is a new build. And I have been experimenting a lot with Jin builds because uh, let me see if I could, if I are, uh, let me see something. No, I actually don't have my old build anymore. But basically what my old build used to be is Yumo's Ghost Blade. Like I would put Yumo's Ghost Blade here and then uh, Guardian Angel here, you know, basically that. So I have a new build and I created this new build. And let me talk to you about this build. This build that I have here deals way more damage than the Yumo's Ghost Blade build. But there is a but. You won't, you obviously will have a little less survivability because the Yumo's Ghost Blade will give you a lot of movement speed. So, this new build, I found it better on Jin. I like, honestly, I found it way better. So, let me explain how it kind of works. And during the gameplay part, I'm going to be explaining to you how you need to utilize this uh, build as well. So, there's actually another weakness about this build, which is that um, you'll likely get a Yumo's Ghost Blade before the first dragon, but not an Infinity Edge. Because Infinity Edge is 3,400 gold. If you want to get this item before the first dragon, you have to get a kill. And you might even have to get two kills or like assists. So that is also another bad part about this build. Like basically the two bad things about this build that I have right now is you probably won't have Infinity Edge during the first dragon. So you're going to be way weaker during the first dragon. And secondly, you're not going to have the bonus movement speed. But what is good about this build? This build deals crazy damage, like crazy, crazy, crazy damage. And let me explain to you how you need to do this. So first, you start with an Infinity Edge, okay? This is obviously your first major power spike. And after your Infinity Edge, build Boots. And there are really, like, I've been experimenting with Mercury's threats too. I, I would say in 90% of my games, so 9 out of 10, I would go for Boots of Swiftness. But in 10% of my games, I would go for Mercury's threats. And I would only go for Mercury's threats if the enemies have a lot of ability power and stuns, silence, things like that, right? So normally you go for Boots of Swiftness, but if the enemy has a lot of ability power and stuns and things like that, go for Mercury's threats. Um, okay, I don't really finish anything here. Like, I don't finish the enchantments on, on uh, Jin. So about your second item, it depends. If you have zero deaths and you feel like you can maintain your zero deaths, you need to listen to me carefully here because it's kind of complicated how to play Jin. Like, if you have zero deaths as I said, and if you feel like you can maintain the zero deaths, what you do is you get a guardian angel as your second item. This is like, this is going to give you a little less damage, but well, actually it's going to give you more damage because you can maintain the 10% bonus. But obviously if you die with the guardian angel, this is totally not worth it. So only go for a guardian angel second. If you have zero deaths and you feel like with a guardian angel, you're not going to die. Um, if you feel like, you know, I'm probably going to die, it's okay. Get a rapid fire cannon. This is going to give you massive damage, okay? And after these two first, I after these two items, um, I really like Phantom Dancer. Like, this is a very nice survivability item, but it also gives you crit damage. Like, as you can see, damage that puts you under 35% HP grants you a shield that absorbs damage, right? So, this is going to be very, very nice on Jin as your third item. Like, after this item, you have 75% crit chance, which is huge, 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 okay? And um, here, like, after these three items, it's situational. Does the enemy have big tanky front lines? Get a mortal reminder. Do you need a guardian angel? Get a guardian angel, right? And you can even decide to go for a Yumo's Ghost Blade, although it's a little late to go for that in the later game, but you can even do it, right? But I don't really recommend it. Like, I never really go for this item anymore. Okay, uh, about the enchantments, by the way. Like, I would say 9 out of 10 games, again, Stasis Enchant. Like, you can maybe go for Quicksilver Enchant if the enemies have a lot of stunts, like, especially, like, Twisted Faith. Against Twisted Faith, get a Quicksilver Enchant. Unless you feel like you don't need it, of course. You know, you have to kind of think, do I need Stasis or do I need Quicksilver Enchant? Like, what you can also do against a Twisted Faith is go for Mercury's Threats and then go for Stasis Enchant. 
Okay, as your runes fleet footwork, definitely, there is no other rune that's good on Jin. Here, I go for champion, you know, because I find it very, very easy to stay alive on Jin. Like almost all my games, I'm, I have very little deaths on Jin. Again, here it depends. You can either go for Spirit Walker or Hunter Titan. Hunter Titan gives you tenacity. Again, if the enemies have a lot of stuns and things like that, this one could be good. But the safe pick is always going to be Spirit Walker. And as your fourth one, Sweet Tooth. Just for the survivability. I really, really like to get Sweet Tooth. And as your spells, of course, Flash and Barrier. Let's get into the gameplay. Okay, guys. I have a banger Jin video for you guys. Like, I, I don't... Look, I don't like to praise myself. But... My Jin is damn clean. And I can teach you a lot about how to play Jin. Because Jin is the type of champion that if you don't play him right, like if you play Jin like you would play Jinx or Kai'Sa, for example, you're going to get demolished. Jin is the type of champion that needs perfectionism. Unfortunately, our LSTAR is kind of inting here. But what I mean with perfectionism is Jin only has four bullets and his abilities are like, you know, he doesn't deal a lot of sustained damage. The way that you need to play Jin is like you need to catch out an enemy or you need to like um, hit them and go out. Like he has a lot of good burst damage and his traps like it, there is so much to say about Jin. I'm going to I'm going to explain it to you all in this video. So first of all, let's talk about laning with Jin. Your laning phase should be very easy when you're playing Jin. And the reason for that is... Jin has so much damage guys especially with your fourth bullet you can utilize your fourth bullet to completely out damage your enemy like your fourth bullet is gonna out damage anything really it's in the early game it's gonna do so much damage especially if you have the champion rune the second thing to note about Jin is fleet footwork you know it's worth to trade with your enemy because you're gonna heal up look as you can see fleet footwork is healing me slowly but steadily but it is healing me so what does that mean? That I'm going to out-sustain the Kai'Sa. As you can see here, like, I'm out-sustaining the Kai'Sa. And boom, look at this combo. Oh, so good already. Really, really nice. Like, look, this is what you need to do on Jin. Exactly this. I, I kind of got tilted that he took my heal here. But it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And look, the Kai'Sa is actually very low. And what I'm thinking here is, look. Boom, easy kill. What a beautiful flash. Oh, so good like they thought that they would oh that was oh okay let me explain so the brahm was holding his shield up what did i do i flashed next to the brahm so his shield wouldn't block the the bullet and i just completely demolished the kaisa oh that was so good actually like this is like this is a perfect example of how you should lane as a jinn this is what you need to do as a Jin. You don't lose lane. If you lose early game as a Jin, you're gonna lose the game. Unless you can like unless you can get farm for free and your team hard carries you. But listen carefully. If you lose early game as a Jin, you lose the game. So um by the way, I quickly want to give a quick shout out to Manuel Pena. Thank you for donating to the channel. You know, I really appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much, man. So um let me talk about Jin's second ability because I see a lot of people struggling with the second ability because it can definitely be really challenging to hit because you know it's a very thin shot like it's very very thin and it's it can be really hard to hit. So let me give you a few tips on how you can hit it. First of all, if you um, um, of course if you hit it without like if you only hit your second ability without the enemy being damaged or anything, they're not gonna get rooted. So what you can do is let's say an enemy is running away from you like away. What you can do is hit them with your first ability or basic attack and you like if they're running away you can kind of predict like you know they're going back so what you can do hit them with a basic attack and immediately cast your second ability don't give them time immediately cast it and you're gonna have a pretty big chance to hit it secondly look boom that is also how you can hit a free route my alistar hit a hit a knock up and then after that i hit my route and as you can see i have my infinity edge already now, what do we need to do? Fight, fight, fight. When you are able to get an infinity edge before the first dragon, you are an absolute god on Jin. okay? Because, like, this item is super duper expensive. It's 3,400 gold. And, as I said, you're likely not going to be getting it before the first dragon because you need kills for it. Like, as you can see, I got one kill and one assist. Especially if you die, as I said, like, if you die in the early game with Jin, 
the game is like kind of over. You know, you're not going to carry anymore. You're going to have to rely on your team. So really, really, really pay attention to that as when you're playing Jin. And I don't recommend you to play Jin as a beginner. Jin is definitely one of the hardest, cha I would say one of the hardest champions to play. Because um, I see a lot of Jin players that are, you know, okay, but they just have zero impact on the game. And that's because, as I said, it's actually really hard to play Jin effectively, you know, to do a lot of damage. Because he's not like Jinx or Kai'Sa or any other ADC. He doesn't have continuous basic attacks. He only has four and then he needs to reload. And he, his four shots are actually very slow. It's like one, two, three, while Jinx is like, you know, it's like, it's, it's different. So that's, that's why I f it's very, very important to kind of snowball with Jin and not lose your champion room. And uh, with the build that I'm going here, it's, it's a little more risky because this build is going to give you less survivability than the Yumo's Ghostblade build. Because as you can see, I'm very slow, actually. Like, I have no boots. Look at how slow I am. This is the only pro uh, this is one of the two problems of this build as I said. Look at this. Look at how much damage I took actually. So as you can see, you know, it can be quite hard to play with this build. So let's take a look at what's going to happen. I'm utilizing my traps. Look, I'm throwing my traps in the middle of the enemies. Your traps are also a very very important tool. As you can see what I'm doing is I'm throwing my traps like in in um in places where the enemies are likely going to be walking. So my traps are obviously going to slow the enemies, deal damage and everything. So it's very, very good. Oh, beautiful by the Evelyn, by the way. So it's very, very important to um, place your traps as well. Another thing to note is your traps are like wards. You know, you can ward a bush with your traps, which you should definitely utilize as a gin. So take a look at what I did in this game. I didn't get boots of swiftness. What did I get? I got mercury threats. Why? Because we're against a twisted faith. And I don't want to get Q a Quicksilver. I don't want to get Quicksilver Enchant. I just went for the Mercury Threat. Because as I said, they have a twisted faith. They just have a lot of stuns, you know. They have Braum as well, who has a stun. And I like I definitely felt like I need the um Mercury Threats in this game. So um if you like you'll know that you're a good gym player if you don't die in your gym games, really. You like you know you, your gin sucks if you die a lot, and you know you're a good gin if you don't die. So let me explain when it's actually okay to die. So as I said, as a gin, you never want to die unless, like, you want to position yourself in a certain way that if the enemies want to kill you, they have to, like, hard dive you and completely, like, lose the fight just to be able to kill you. Only then it is worth it. So let's take a look at what's going to happen in this fight. I still have my ultimate. Boom. I can just use my ult. Boom. Boom. However, my Alistar is just getting completely destroyed and that was not a good fight. So, as you can see, um, in the initial fight, we were trading well. But in the longer fight, in the sustained fight, you lose as a Jin. And this is what you really, really need to understand about Jin, guys. You lose the sustained fight. Oh, they're actually going after me. As you can see, they really want to kill me because they probably know that I have a champion rune. But I'm not going to let them kill me, you know. I'm positioning carefully and as you can see... Rooting him, easy peasy kills. They completely overextended to try and kill me. And my positioning, you really need to pay attention to how I'm positioning with Jin. Because as I said, this is completely different from Jinx, Kaisa and whatever. Jin needs proper positioning. You need to like, you need to position yourself in a safe place. Don't go super deep. Don't, just don't, okay? Jin is not the type of champion that can do that. You have to stay in a safe spot. Use your basic attack from a distance, use your abilities from a distance, and like all your abilities have a long range. Your first ability and your second ability especially has a long range, your third ability can throw traps, and your ultimate is long range. Why? Because the way that you need to play Jin is safe. Understand guys, please understand this. Like I see so many Jin players, they're like, yeah, I'm just gonna go in 1v9 the game, yeah, I'm not gonna let my allies go in. That is so stupid, that is like... That is like playing poke Alistar or something. That's like playing Alistar and not, never going in. It's just not how Alistar works. And it's not how Jin works either. As you can see, I knew he was there. Just threw my trap. And look at this. Look at this. Do you really think he's going to survive this? Boom. Combo. Boom. And boom. Your second ability. Um, another tip that I have for you to use your second ability is stack it. Don't immediately shoot it after the Alistar. Wait for, like, so the Alistar knocks the enemy up, 
it knocks the enemy up wait for the enemy to go back down and when the enemy is almost gonna be down immediately root them again don't root them look boo yeah yeah boo just like that that is a perfect route that i did there because if you do that you're gonna effectively immobilize the enemy for, enemy for like i think three seconds or something and in the late game it can even be like four seconds it's crazy how long the route so keep that in mind guys and as you can see well my camera crashed as you can see i went for a guardian angel in this game and the reason for that is as i mentioned during the build part of the video i you know i was pretty sure that i can stay alive with the guardian angel so that's why I got it. And if I'm able to stay alive, I get the bonus 10% damage from the champion, right? Okay, let's take a look. Again, I'm keeping my second ability, waiting for the Alistar to dive in. He dived in. He actually didn't dive in on the Kai'Sa, unfortunately. So I'm using the Braum. It's not really worth it to use on the Braum, to be honest. That was really not well played by the... by the My camera crashed again, really? Hey. I didn't even notice. Test, test. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Let's take a look. Again, look at my positioning. Look at my positioning. I'm all the way behind the wall. All the way behind the wall. Not going in any further than that. Unfortunately, my team kind of entered the fight. So I was really unable to do much. So let's take a look at what's going to happen. I have my ultimate ready in case it's necessary, of course. But you never really want to use your ultimate just like this. Because it's not going to do anything. Yeah, they're just gonna they're just going to get the turret. Again not going too far not allowing the team to kill me you know i just want to play it safe and especially now that you have a guardian angel um so the way that it works obviously when you die you're gonna have the guardian angel but the way that you can effectively utilize this is stay close to your team you can play a little more aggressive now though and if the enemy pops your guardian angel you have to spam ping your teammates to come to you because when they come to you, you know, the enemies are probably going to be like low because you you damage the enemies. And if they come to you, they can help you, right? And that's how you can still maintain your zero deaths. Never die like an idiot alone. As a Jin, that's not what you want to do. You're not going to be able to 1v2 enemies. You're not. Please trust me, you're not. Like, you're just not. Okay. What do I have about Jin? I have so much to say about Jin. Maybe I should not talk as much as I'm doing right now, probably talking so much <laughs> let me know in the comments by the way what should you let me know in the comments i already asked you guys what your favorite adc is so nah just just put down a nice comment i guess you know i read all the comments so yeah. oh take a look oh he actually flashed out of it he actually flashed out of my uh, route i would have definitely hit him though this is not looking too good but again i am positioning in the back line not going too far and as you can see still getting the kills Boom! Also snipe the Brom. Again, you know, staying safe. Like, um, you want to be the, like, when you're playing Jin, you want to be the super annoying, obnoxious champion that the enemies just cannot kill while you're dashing out damage on them. Like, you're, as I said, you're going to be the champion that the enemies just cannot kill and they're going to get so frustrated because if you play Jin well, they just can't kill you. Really, they can't. And, if they want to kill you, they have to die five men. And like when they do that, of course, they're all going to die. And then it is actually worth dying. You know, that's what I mean. Like if you die after the enemy's five men engaged on you, it is worth it because your team should be able to clean up. And it's funny because half of the video I've been talking about positioning because that's that's half of Jin's kit positioning. You know, it's literally half of the way that you have to play Jin position well. And then, you know, how to hit your abilities, what to build, blah, blah, blah. But positioning is 50% of how to play Jin well. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Again, you know, easy route. And oh, this is just perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect gameplay. And here I'm going a little too far. Look at this. Okay, I got killed. What am I doing? I'm pinging my team to come. They come. And I'm still alive. What did I say like five minutes ago? When you die when you're with your guardian angel, make sure you are close to your teammates and ping them to help. What did I do? I died close to my teammates and I pinged them to help. Okay, take a look at this. We're taking the Baron and the jungler is actually pinging that we have no smite. The jungler is pinging that we have no smite, but we're still doing the Baron and I am still doing the Baron too. Why? 
I want you to let me know in the comments right now, if you want, of course, before watching the video, why am I still doing the Baron, even though we have no smite? Look at this scenario. Take a look at what's happening and let me know in the comments. You know, it would be a good training for you. I'm going to give you the answer in like 10 seconds. Okay, so look. What is the answer? Jin's fourth, Jin's fourth basic attack outsmites the smite. As you could see, the, I knew the Lee Sin was probably gonna try to steal the Baron, but I know also know that Jin's basic attack, the fourth one, out damages a smite, smite in the mid game and late game. You know, if you have like two or three items, you are gonna out damage the smite. So that is actually the answer to the question. So obviously, three of the enemies were dead. So, you know, they can't take a fight. Um, and my solution, so that's why we can do Baron. But obviously, the problem is that the Lee Sin can steal it with his smite. So, my solution to that is I can just outsmite him. So, if you answered that in the comments, congratulations, you're a very smart gym player, okay? They're actually fighting without me, which is totally fine because they're kind of ahead right now, you know? We also got the Baron buff. No, they're just chilling. Ooh, one second. Yeah. And at this point, you know, um, Actually, I want to note something about Jin. Like Jin, the enemies can come back against you when you're playing Jin. If you can, like, even if you're super ahead, if you throw and if you die two times, first of all, you're gonna lose your champion rune. Secondly, the enemies are gonna get a lot of gold. And when the enemy catches up to you as a Jin, you're gonna lose. They surrendered here, easy peasy. So keep that in mind, guys. As a Jin, you wanna be ahead. Don't allow the enemies to catch up to you because you start with the champion rune which is already a head start because you're gonna have more damage than the enemies and keep that keep just keep it okay so i really hope this video helped you out and um, thank you very much for watching one second let me show you this yeah as you can see Jin doesn't deal the oh oops Jin doesn't deal the most damage what am i doing but you know i still actually did my part in the game so thank you very much for watching i will see you all in the next wild Rift video bye bye <laughs>